Okay, so welcome back. Now, if you've done much software development in the business science engineering world, you've probably at some point come to the realization that, hey, I seem to be writing certain functions over and over again. I'm writing the same code over and over again to do the same thing. And, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I could make kind of a generic block of code that I could copy and paste into my new applications because I'm always doing that same function. Wouldn't it be nice to have something already done so I don't have to go and reinvent the reel each time? Recently, we did a video showing how you could make kind of a generic class for what you see here. And this is a C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And we have some data that we have grabbed uh, after monitoring our computer hardware, specifically our GPU, graphics processor unit. And we are charting some variables coming out of the operation of that GPU, the load, the temperatures, and so on. And what we did in a recent video is we showed how to make a custom class in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms that would allow you to save a whole lot of time and be able to make a line chart like you see here uh, with only a couple lines of code. And if you've done charts before in C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms, you know, you see a lot of this stuff where you've got these lines and lines of code and all they do is they configure your chart. So what we did is we wrote a class that would put all of this under the hood and all you have to do is give it some parameters and would behind the scenes it would configure your chart. So what we're going to do in this video is we are going to do something very similar for what you see here. And that is something you probably do very, very often in your science engineering business applications. And that is read and write to text or CSV comma separated value files. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you how to take a file like this and automatically read it, parse it, save the values, and then write values to a file and not have to write lines and lines of code, just make it a whole lot easier by writing a custom class. So what you see here is what's called a CSV or comma separated value file. Again, we've done many videos on this. And you can see it's got a header, which gives you the name of the values. And then all of the rest of the lines are, in this case, a time with a comma and a value. And that is what's, a, what's called a comma separated value file. There are different formats of CSV files. We've talked before about files that might look like this, where all the values are comma separated values. However, they represent, rather than just time, in this case, time and value, they represent variables related to real world objects. And what we did is we showed you how to use a library called CSV Helper to automatically take this data and assign it to C Sharp classes that represent real world pieces of equipment. I encourage you to take a look at that. But in this video, we're going to look at this, which is kind of a standard format CSV file with maybe a header and then multiple values separated by commas, which often represent readings or that kind of thing. So let's take a look at how we can make a CSV read write class that will make this a whole lot easier. So now here is our simple C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. It's very simple. Um, the Form 1 is the default Form 1. I've just drag and dropped a text box here and an exit button, right? So nothing fancy. And this application, all it's going to do is it's going to instantiate a class. And this is the class we're going to look at that we're going to develop. It's called the CSV Read Write class. And we've got the code over here we'll take a look at. And it instantiates that, calls it CSV. And all this is going to do is when we start up the form, it's going to access a method in that CSV class called read file. You feed it the directory that you want to look in for a file that you want to read in. And it will do an open file dialog. It will read in that file. It will parse it into lists of X vowels and Y vowels. And it will store those values. And then it will write those values to another file that you specify here. And it will basically take all the data you read in and send it out to a file. 
And we have one other method that really isn't very important. It's just that I'm going to also print that data to a text box on this form. But really, you can see that all of the reading and writing comes down to just one line of code each, and it makes it really, really easy. And the workhorse is going to be what we show here, which is this CSV read write class. So let me start this up, and it's going to go in and it's going to read a CSV file, and it has saved it to, a, to another file and printed out the values that it read in. And it's basically these values right here. So it's making it very easy to read and write our data to and from a CSV file. So now that we see that it's pretty straightforward, let's take a look at this CSV read write class and see how we do it. So using statements, using system, system collections generic, we're going to take the data we read in and put them into lists. And we have system IO, system language integrated query we're going to use, and system windows.formed. Our namespace, CSV read write class. And then the class is going to be CSV read write. Again, we just go into the project, right click, add class, and we've named it CSV read write, and it's a separate file. So documentation, we'll quickly go through this. This, cl this class allows you to read from or write to a CSV file that is in standard what I call data acquisition format, which means it's got usually a time comma value. So it might have multiple values, but it's basically in this format and which may or may not have a single header line, which we showed before. It holds the data read from or to be written to the CSV file in an internal list of string and list of double uh, inside the class so that you can access it remotely. When reading a file, the user merely calls read file as we showed before, and it calls open file dialog. We'll read the entire file into an internal string. That method will then call parse file string, which will call other methods to determine if the file contains a header line and to check to see whether the X values in the file are in double or date time format. It will then parse all the lines into an appropriate internal list of double or list of date time and save an int val format, which will be a number that tells us what format the X values are in. It'll be one if the X values are double and two if they are date time and zero if it couldn't parse them into either. And then when writing to file, the user sets the internal string header string if present. So that's the header that the, you want to send out when you write the file and populates the internal list of string called file lines list which represents all the lines to be written. The user then calls write to file, as we showed before, and the file will be written. So very straightforward. Um, we've got a to-do, which not much left. We've got some fields, which are going to define some of our variables. And then we've got some methods. Now you can see here, we've got the read file method that we access. You just give it the initial directory. It will do an open file dialog. We've got the write to file, and you give it the file path and it will send the whatever data to the file. And then this read file will then take the data it read in, parse the file string with this method. Uh, it will check for header to see if there's a header line. And then since the X values can either be a date time or a double, then this is going, this method is going to check and tell us what format the input uh, X values are. So now we got some fields in our class. Uh, file text is basically a string. We're setting it to null, uh, but we're basically going to use that to read in the entire contents of the file as one big string. And then we've got some lists of doubles and a date time list. Now the X values, the first value in each line can be either a double or a date or date time. So we've got two lists. Uh, we will populate one of them. We've got an X vals double and an X vals date. So depending on what the X vals is, we'll put it in one of these. And then we're allowing for up to four Y vals after the first value in each line. So we got Y vals one, two, three, and four. We, we may not populate them, but we've got them there in case uh, we need to. Um, then we've got an integer called number of values per line. That's telling us how many values in each line so we can know whether we populate one or more of these. 
Then we've got a list of string, which is file lines list, which we're going to take the entire string uh, containing the entire file when we read it in and break it into lines in this list of string. And then we're going to have a line split string array. So we're going to have an array that contains for each line the string values in that line. That's going to be a string array. And then we're going to save whatever header string we read in or we're going to write out as a string called header string. And then we're going to have an integer which tells us what is the format of the x value. Is it a double? Is it a date time? So we're going to parse it. And the result, we're going to, we're going to set this integer depending on what the format is that we read in. And that's basically it for the, the fields. Then we've got the methods as we talked about before, read file, write to file, and then parsing, checking for header, and checking xval format. So we'll first look at the read file. And what we're doing here is we're basically doing a simple open file dialog. Open file dialog, we're going to call it OFD. Uh, we're going to set the initial directory to that directory that we feed in, that the user feeds in, in here. Here's the starting directory. And we're going to set an OFD filter, which says we want it to filter out only CSV, text files, or all files. So when we start it up, it will, down here, it'll say we can either select CSV files, text files, or all files. So if, if the dialog result is OK, we show the dialog and the user selected. Uh, the string file name is the OFD file name. And we're going to try to read all text from that file name. We're going to do a file.readAllText. And we're going to read that into this string, file text. So it's all the lines into one string. We're going to then call parse file string. So parse file string is going to take the entire contents of the file, which is one big string, and it's going to parse those. Parses the string file text that contains the entire input file in one string. First, we have to define the EOL, the end of line characters, and I did a video recently on what those are. Um, but we're going to define a character array of end of line characters, a new character array. We're going to use carriage return and line feed as the characters that define the end of each line. So then we can parse the entire single string into this file lines array, which is an array of strings. So we're going to do a file text, which is the single string containing the entire text. We're going to do a dot split with the EOL characters. String split options remove empty entries. And that will give us an array of strings representing that file. Then we're going to convert that to a list. We're just going to say this file lines array to list. And now we've got a list of file lines. Make it a little bit easier to operate on. And then we're going to take that list and check for header to see if there's a header on the incoming file. And we'll look at that later. Then we're going to go through and check the format of the X values. Is it a double or is it a date? So that we know we can parse it and we can know how to um, access it. We'll look at those two. But now we've got a for each string str in the file lines list, which is a list of string with all the lines in it, we're going to then do a line split string array is string dot split. So we're going to assume there's comma delimiters. And we're going to get a uh, string array with all of the values on each line split by commas. And then we're going to convert that to a list, line split string array to list. And it's going to be a list of string called line split string list. So now all of the comma separated strings in that line will be in this list. So then what we have to do is we got to say, hey, are any of those empty strings? Because, for example, if I've got a trailing comma in a line, it's going to say, hey, there's another value when in fact there isn't. So I want to make sure I strip off any values that are null or empty. So for each string in that list of strings representing a line, uh, we're going to go through string is null or empty. If it is, this line split string list i, then we're going to remove that element of that list. So basically getting rid of all the uh, null or empty values.
Now what we have is a nice clean line split string list. So it's a list of all the values and the number of Y values per line is that count of that list minus one because the X vowels don't count. We're just figuring out how many Y vowels. So that gives us a number of Y vowels per line. And if the X value format is one, which means it is a double, then we're going to take the zeroth element of each line and try to parse it as a double. And it's, the out is going to be a double parsed X, and then we're going to add that to the X vowels double. However, if it's a date time, if the X vowel format equals two, which means it's a date time value, um, we're going to try parse that same value with an out as date time. We're going to call it parsed X. And then we're going to populate the X vowels date dot add with that value. So these two sections of code just say, okay, are the X values doubles or date times? And depending on what the answer is, it's going to populate the list, uh, the appropriate list of double or date times. Now that we've got that done, what we can do is we can operate on the Y values. We've already figured the X values. So we're going to, we know we're going to have at least one Y value. So we're going to do a double try parse line split string list, the first element, and the out is going to be the parsed Y1. And we're going to add that automatically to the Y vowels one. Then if we have more than one Y value, if it's, if the number of vowels per line is greater than or equal to two, we're going to do the exact same thing, but with the line split string list two and parse that to parsed Y2 and then add that to Y vowels two. And same thing for if we have three elements and the same thing if we have four elements, right? So we're just allowing for up to four Y values. So now we have populated the X vowels and the Y vowels list and we're pretty much done. We just need to look at these um, methods that we passed over before where we check for a header and check the X value format. Uh, here we're just checking to see if there is a header. So what this is going to give us an array of header values which are going to be strings. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and parse them as a double. And if they're strings, this isn't going to work. So if it's not a header, this will work and we'll do a try parse and out double. Otherwise, if it is a string, we will say header string equal file lines list zero and then remove that header from the list of um, file lines. So all we're doing is we're saying, hey, if there's a header, save it as this header string and then remove it so that we can operate on the rest of the values. So that's the check for header. And then the other thing is the check XVALS format. So as you can imagine, we're just checking, is it a double or is it a date time? We're gonna say line split string away array, file lines list zero. We're gonna split with commas, delimiters. And then same thing as we did before. We're going to try parse as a double. If it's successful, then the XVAL format is one. If it's not, which means it's a date time, XVAL format equals two. So that's about it. So now what we've done is we have successfully read in the file and parsed all the values and put them in the appropriate list and dealt with a header. Now, the only other thing we need to do is if we want to write to file, we've got the write to file method. And all that's going to do is it's going to do using stream writer, we'll call it output file as a new stream writer with whatever file path we send it. And that includes the file and the file name. So if it's not null or empty, we're going to say there's a header string and I'm going to write that. Otherwise, for each string, we're going to output the file write line and the string that we're sending out. So for each file lines list, we're just going to send that to the output file. And that's about it. That's our class that makes reading and writing uh, text in CSV files very, very easy because um, you can basically just use a couple methods and it will do the parsing. It will check for headers, check the date and time format, and that's about it. So um, that's it for this one. If you're liking these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.